Hello everyone. In this video we will study about mediators of hormones action. Any signaling that you came across till now. The basic signaling came would be the bioreceptor, which conveying that signal into nucleus. In the middle of that, Sever's middlemen are there, and these middlemen are actually second messengers. Here we'll discuss some important second messenger along with its biological action. Content, here we will cover the introduction of second messenger, and some example of mediators, these are calcium ions. And cyclic amp. Introduction Mediators of hormones action are also known as second messengers. These second messengers are intracellular signaling molecules released by the cell that relay signals from receptors on the cell surface, according to the type of first messenger, to produce biochemical signal inside the cell. First messengers are extracellular factors because the peptide hormones and neurotransmitters which are example of first messengers are biochemically hydrophilic molecules these first messengers may not physically cross the phospholipid bilayer to initiate changes within the cell directly that's why the extracellular signal may be propagated intracellularly. These intracellular messengers have some properties in common. Number one, they can be synthesized and broken down again in specific reactions by enzymes. Number two, they can be stored in special organelles and quickly released when needed. They greatly amplify the strength of signal and cause changes in the activity of the cell. They are component of cell signaling pathways. Examples of second messenger molecules include cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP, inositol triphosphate, diacylglycerol, and calcium ion. Now we'll see the difference between first messengers and second messenger. First messenger are usually hormones. These are extracellular factors. Bind to receptors in plasma membrane and cannot have direct effect on the activities inside target cell. See the diagram. They use intracellular intermediate to exert effect leads to second messengers. Whereas second messenger are intracellular signaling molecules. They may act as enzyme, activator, inhibitor or cofactor. Result in change in rate of metabolic reactions. Calcium 2 plus ion and cyclic AMP are the common example of second messenger. Now we'll discuss about some important second messengers. Calcium ions are one type of second messenger and are responsible for many important physiological functions. Increase in calcium ions concentration cause many response in animal cell, which includes muscle cell contraction, secretion of hormones like insulin, Cell division Activation of T cell and B cell Adhesion of cells to extracellular matrix and cell death Fertilization and neurotransmitter release These ions are normally bound or stored in intracellular components such as the endoplasmic reticulum and can be released during signal transduction. Calcium ions act as second messenger in many pathways. It binds to protein kinase C, that is PKC, 
which activates variety of biochemical changes, see the diagram number 1. When calcium 2 plus ion, binds to intracellular receptor protein, that is, colmodulin, see the second diagram, it activates. Many enzymes, involved in metabolism of cyclic nucleotides. Protein phosphorylation. Secretory function. Formation of microtubule. Glycogen metabolism. And calcium flux. Neurons use many different second messengers as intracellular signals. Here we will discuss the calcium ion, which is perhaps the most common intracellular messenger in neurons. In this example, a ligand binds to a calcium channel, causing it to open and let calcium ions into the cell. In another example, a voltage change across the plasma membrane causes a voltage-sensitive calcium channel to open. This transient rise in cytoplasmic calcium concentration transmits information within the cell. The rise in calcium allows calcium ions to bind to a large number of calcium binding proteins that serve as molecular targets, such as calmodulin, which is abundant in the cytosol of all cells. Binding of calcium to calmodulin activates this protein. Calmodulin then activates, further signaling pathways by binding to downstream targets such as protein kinases. In order for a rise in intracellular calcium to be sensed by the cell, the cell must carefully maintain resting levels of calcium. Ordinarily, the calcium concentration in the cytosol is low, about 100 nanomolar, which is the same as 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. The concentration of calcium ions outside neurons is about a millimolar, or 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. This steep gradient is maintained by a number of mechanisms. Proteins in the plasma membrane transport calcium out of the cell. One type is an ATPase called a calcium pump. The energy from ATP hydrolysis is used to pump calcium up its concentration gradient, while hydrogen ions are counter-transported. Another means of maintaining the gradient is by the action of a sodium-calcium exchanger. This exchanger uses the energy from a concentration gradient of sodium ions across the membrane exchanging sodium ions for calcium. When calcium levels rise within the cell, a variety of calcium binding proteins, in addition to calmodulin, bind to the calcium. One other example is calbindin, which serves as a calcium ion buffer. It reversibly binds calcium and thus blunts the magnitude and kinetics of calcium signals within neurons. Calcium ions are also pumped into the cell's mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum uses a calcium pump similar to that in the plasma membrane. As calcium levels fall, the signaling systems return to their resting state. Through the action of the pumps, the ER and mitochondria can serve as storage depots of calcium ions that are later released to participate in signaling events. For example, Channels in the ER allow calcium to be released from the interior of the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. One such channel is the inositol triphosphate, or IP3, receptor, which opens when another second messenger, IP3, binds to it. Another calcium-releasing channel is the ryanidine receptor, named after a drug that binds to and partially opens these receptors. Among the biological signals that activate ryanidine receptors, are cytoplasmic calcium and, at least in muscle cells, depolarization of the plasma membrane. In these ways, calcium ion concentrations are modulated and used to convey information in the cell. Cyclic AMP This is also an important second messenger. CAMP stands for cyclic adenosine monophosphate. It is one type of second messenger, which is synthesized from ADP, by the action of, enzyme, known as adenylylcyclase. CAMP activates protein kinase A, which causes a cellular response. 
It is used for intracellular signal transduction, such as transferring into cells. It is also involved, in the activation of protein kinases. In addition, CAMP binds, and regulates, the function of ion channels. Binding of the hormones, to its receptor, activates Ag protein, which in turn activates, adenyl cyclase. The G protein is the, intermediate between, the receptor and the synthesis of cyclic AMP. The resulting rise in CAMP, leads to appropriate response in the cell, either by turning on a new pattern of gene transcription, by binding with a protein called CREB that is CAMP response element binding protein, or by changing the molecular activities in the cytoplasm. Now we'll discuss signaling pathway of cyclic AMP. The signaling molecule for cyclic AMP pathway are generally hormones, that is first messenger. Example of such kind of hormones is adrenaline. In this case, now the receptor is GPCR, that is, G protein coupled receptor, because the cyclic AMP mediated signaling pathway are most related with. AG protein coupled receptor. These are a type of transmembrane receptor as well. Adenyl cyclase is an enzyme that convert ADP into cyclic AMP, which stimulates protein kinase A, PKA. Subsequently, specific proteins are phosphorylated by PKA to evoke cellular reactions. The final signal truncate molecule R, transcription factor, that bring the signal inside the nucleus, and allow the transcription to happen. And in this case, the transcription factor is CAMP response element binding protein, that is, CREB. CREB bind with, the specific region of DNA binding side. As a result of this, Extracellular signals activate the transcription of target genes via alterations in Krebs phosphorylation, thereby resulting in multiple cellular response. Thank you.